What's up, everybody? What's up, everybody? Just gave it a few seconds to start here. Sometimes it takes a minute to. I know when I do the uh, live or when it uploads, it cuts off the very beginning sometimes, but. Hey, I'm just going to give you guys uh, a little bit of an update on my cath or my um, uh, Botox injections I got last Tuesday, a week ago. Um, so I'm going to talk about that, just kind of how that went. And, and then, you know, uh, if anybody has questions about getting Botox or super pubic catheter or anything, I'll you know, talk about that kind of stuff or whatever other questions you guys got. So, yeah, I'll just start in a few seconds. I'm just going to give you guys a... People are starting to come in. How's it going, everybody? <laughs> uh, oh. Crap, I hope my phone is okay on battery. What's going on, Ben? Margaret? Is this? Me? Yeah, Margaret. What's going on, guys? Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, Mike, uh, how many, okay, so yeah, I'll just get into it now. You guys are, uh, um, so Mike, yeah, so I did, I got my Botox injections last Tuesday, and I got, I don't know how many injections, like how many things they do, but it was uh, 300 milliliters of Botox, I guess, um, which the first time I only got 200, because that's, I guess, a little bit lower of the dose. So the first, it was since it was my first time last time, they started me with the 200. And then this time she wanted to, my urologist wanted to bump me up to up to the 300. So, cause I, it did start to wear off a little bit after a few months. Uh, hopefully this one will be good. But uh, it is, um, uh, I don't know, it's good. <laughs> um, sliding scale. Yeah, I guess it's, uh, the, they just want to see what works best for me. And since it is still newer to me, this is only the second time I've got it done now. She wants to get it to the point where uh, it's not wearing off every time. What's going on? I can't read that name. Blue. <laughs> um, but yeah, so she wants to kind of get, get it to the point where it's fully always in there and I don't. Because near the end, uh, I could tell I had worn off a little bit. Like I was still getting some bladder leakage. Like I was peeing a little bit when I had like a little bit of an infection or even just when I get my catheter changed, it would leak uh that first day or so um the botox injections what do they do they're basically like botox anywhere else it kind of like tightens the skin i think so when they inject it into the bladder it tightens your bladder wall and it doesn't allow it to spasm very much so it keeps your bladder from spasming and uh it like it it basically keeps me from peeing on myself like which is you know good all, like most of the time uh, only one incidence I did I think I've talked about it before on here but uh, a few months ago now during the last Botox like before it had worn off uh, I got blockage in my catheter because I wasn't flushing it like I, I don't know why I stopped flushing it I just stopped after the last Botox for some weird reason um, and I'm back to flushing it now every couple days or every other day so anyways I, I wasn't flushing it and it got clogged up and ended up having to go to the ER to get intermittent cath self like uh, self cath so they had to like go in and empty my bladder because the catheter wasn't emptying it and my blood pressure was just like through the roof. I was getting blotches everywhere and like throbbing headache, the full dysreflexia like big time. Um, so that's the one drawback to having the Botox is, you know, you if you have a problem with the blockage or no flow, like it just doesn't flow. So everything was just stuck in me. Um, so that's the one, the one drawback I definitely have found. And the other weird thing is, which, so this is not to do, I guess, with, I don't know if it has to do with the bladder or not, but it happened last time. My urologist told me that it, it had nothing to do with the Botox and stuff, but last time um, I got really weak afterwards, like, like my arms and like, I was just fatigued easier. Um, and like I couldn't, like they went actually, I went like a week or two where I couldn't even do my transfers. I had my brothers here, so I, I literally had them transferring me. But I thought it was maybe because of all the bleeding that happened too, because when they were doing the 
uh, when I got Botox last time, it was right surrounded by the two different times that they like ripped my bladder open, one right before and one right after. So uh, I just kind of thought it was like to have to do with that. But now a week later after getting the um, after getting the injections now, the first couple of days I felt fine. But as the, the last, since starting like maybe Thursday or Friday, so like two or three days after the injections, I got, I've been, and still right now, I, like I'm struggling to transfer. Like I'm, I'm ending up sitting on the wheel half the time. I'm in the middle. I don't make it to my chair and I have to like try to balance and get it over. And it's just like, it's been, it's been ugly. <laughs> I've almost fallen probably uh, like five or six times over the last few days because of sketchy transfers because I just don't have the arm strength right now. And even, I, I tried to go to rugby practice on Sunday thinking, um, you know, like, I, I'd be fine, like, whatever. I, I just thought maybe, I don't know. I just thought maybe if I went pushing, sometimes getting that blood flow and stuff helps. But I was just so unbelievably slow. Like, I was the slowest person at practice. Like, I couldn't keep up with all the people I normally keep up with. I, I was just dying, like, I, I don't know. And so some of the guys were thinking maybe it's just because of the trauma of everything, you know, like, because they do stick, you know, a scope tube thing in your pee hole, go into your bladder, inject, you know, needles into your, you know, Botox needles into the bladder and stuff. Yeah, it's great for bladder spasms. It really is. It's fantastic. So, and that's one thing. I mean, it is really good. Like, I don't pee. It, it, it feels better. Oh, like, my bladder definitely feels better. I don't have as much spasms. Um, you had 20 shots in your bladder? Yeah, see, I don't know how many shots it was. Um, and that's the other thing, too. Um, I, I know several people that can just go into the urologist's office and get their Botox injections right there, you know, because they have no feeling or whatever, so they just go in with the scope up and in, and they have to fill your bladder. Like, I think they, they fill it through the suprapubic, so it's, uh, you know, like, as open as possible. Um, when they go in there, so for some reason, every time she kind of messes with my bladder, I get really bad dysreflexia. Like it just starts to build up. Um, my blood, yeah, my blood pressure just starts to spike, and my head starts to throb. I start to sweat, um, like my forehead and stuff. So that's why I have to when I've got it done these last couple times. I've actually gone in, and I have to get put under. You know, like they put me under anesthesia. I have to actually go to the hospital and do like a little mini outpatient. OR procedure thing like um, because uh, yeah I guess my, my urologist is too afraid of my blood pressure going crazy so so I have no idea how many they're injecting in me I'm asleep the whole time uh, <laughs> they knock me out once I get in there and yeah I, I'm just I'm just knocked out so I, I, I don't know how many actual I don't know how many mills go into what's going on Presley <laughs> um, how many mills go into each you know injection uh, but I know I got 300 over the 200 last time, so they they increased how much they did for me. So we'll see. So far, it's good. Like everything is fine, but uh, it's the like weakness right now. Like I'm I'm really struggling to transfer and do anything. Um, yeah, that's what somebody else said. It might be the anesthesia, you know, like because that was the other thing too. So <laughs> it happened last time, and then this time bad it only happened for the first day or two but I was super constipated also like the first two times I tried to do my bowel movement my bowel program um, after getting the Botox injections and that somebody told me might have been the anesthesia not you know not the in inject injections uh, not the Botox so I don't know yet. I'm still trying to figure it out because I am so it's only my second time doing it now so a lot of you guys might have more experience than that than I do um, you know, a lot of my friends on my rugby team have a lot more experience for sure. They all have gotten it, or a lot of people have gotten it, you know, for years now. Um, just, uh, I don't know. I'm still a little bit, I, I like it. I think it does help a lot. It just has those couple little drawbacks, and I got to figure out this weakness thing because I, I, I can't keep doing it for, the, for too much longer. So hopefully... Um, can I still drink? Oh, you can still drink a ton. Yeah, yeah, you can still drink as much as you want. More, yeah. Um, so that's the other thing, too, is um, normally, and I think I've talked about this a lot, like, I get a lot of sediment in my bladder, you know, a lot of, like, cloudy chunks of stuff that come out. Not really mucusy stuff, which I've now um, learned from other people 
that have like where, when you get like your bladder uh, extended or like when they you know they 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 take a piece of like intestine and they actually make your bladder bigger for some people for people that do intermittent calfing, um, you know so you have a bigger bladder because sometimes it's really small. Which I know for, a friend of mine got injured when he was really young. He was like a child. Uh, so his bladder, you know, was small to start with, and so once he started getting older, it wasn't growing, and they did like a surgery like that. So he has like a ton of mucus that comes out of the catheter, and he has to flush multiple times a day to clear the mucus. So that's different, because I've actually had people ask me about mucus in, in the thing, and I kind of assume they're talking about the cloudiness, like the sediment, but mine is like more sediment. It's definitely like a thicker, harder material. Like it's like a... I don't know, yeah, it looks like it, if it goes through the water, it, it, it like mixes in like as it's like going down the tube, it kind of will break up and get cloudy. Uh, but yeah, it's not as mucus, so uh, there are two different things. So if you are having mucus um, and you have had some sort of bladder surgery where they've extended it or uh, something like that, then, uh, then yeah, you, like watch out for that kind of stuff. But for me, I get, once with the Botox injections, like since this whole week, I've been getting very, very little sediment coming out of my bladder. It's just nothing really, um, uh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna read all these questions in a second, just one second. <laughs> uh, so it's just really, really cloudy, uh, or not really cloudy at all. It's really been really clear, really good and clean and stuff. Um, and I've been flushing it this week <laughs> right from the start not not trying not to let it if there is sediment in there trying to let it clog it up like that happened last time <clears throat> so hopefully uh sorry my blood pressure is like i don't know if it's a weakness thing or what but I'm, that's why i'm leaning a lot more today you see me like trying to not get lightheaded <laughs> um <clears throat> sorry so yeah the uh the uh, sediment is way more way down when the Botox is injected or once the bladder because I think a lot of the the um, sediment and stuff is created from your bladder spasming so like when your bladder wall is spasming in there and stuff from the catheter uh, that is causing a lot of the sediment and stuff so since I'm not getting bladder spasms right now I think that's why my urine is so much clearer uh, this week and it has been just yeah super clear plus I just did antibiotics because I had a UTI and they wanted me to clear it out before um, before doing the operation or at least start them before or not operation really this is got to be before they had put me under to do the stuff uh, Botox but all right let me go check some of these questions I know a bunch of you guys have been um, putting in here so I'm lucky they put me under yeah <laughs> I mean I definitely wouldn't want to watch it happen a lot uh, did I bleed a lot you know, I actually, for like three days, had just drops, like like little bits of blood that was coming out of my penis, you know, like out, because that's where they stick the scostopine and that's that's where they go in for the injections. And that did scare me. By, by the third day when it was still happening, I kind of got nervous, but it stopped that night and it, it hasn't gone since. So that's, that's good. Um, so let me just check here. Um, are there alternatives? I'm thinking if there's other alternatives. Um, yeah, uh, pretty much the other alternatives are just other drugs, you know, ditch your pan and different stuff that do the same thing that relax your bladder, try to relax the bladder muscles, but I also do take that too. Um, and then yeah, maybe the anesthesia, sorry, still rolling through, there was a lot of questions on here, you guys are actually typing quite a bit. Um, um, I find the chunky, foggy pee uh, worse in the winter. If I cover up my body, it gets hot. That's crazy. So yeah, you get more of it when you're colder, when your body's hot, doesn't it? Uh, I, haven't, I haven't noticed the temperature type of difference thing with me. I don't think um, more towards winter or summer or anything. It just seems like I just get it all the time. <laughs> um, except for now, less with the Botox for sure. Um, supplement or diet... So yeah, that's what, you know, I drink, a, I try not to drink too much, I, like other, like I do drink a little bit of soda and some juice and stuff, but I mostly drink water through the day. Um, and yeah, I don't know what else could be causing it, like, you know, more sediment. But from what I've heard from the urologist and stuff, it, uh, 
it's a uh, it's like it's more these bladder spasms and stuff that cause it because of having a foreign object in my bladder all the time you know I have the super pubic it's been surgically put in there and it's always in there so it just kind of your body's way of rejecting it um, is what I've been told for the most part oops um, Presley oh thanks a picture yeah I love the Godfather movies <laughs> I used to think I was a gangster when I was a kid <laughs> I am Italian <laughs> uh, just kidding uh, I'm thinking about getting other alternative oh, other alternatives these catheters are getting expensive yeah catheters are expensive if, yeah if, especially if you have to do intermittent catheting I know a lot of people and I know insurances are wanting to pay for less and less um, and yeah that's that's just got to be hard because uh, I've been doing a lot more spinal cord injury support groups lately trying to go and show support there my more my local community um, and talking to more people out there and stuff and uh, yeah it's a uh, it's crazy yeah catheter the issue with catheters and insurance right now is just so bad insurances in general you know like they just want to kick you out of rehab super super quick give you like no catheters <laughs> It's it's rough. You got to definitely try to work the system. Um, yeah, so your bladder, Mason, you said your bladder is very important for your blood pressure. Yeah, that's actually, I think, one of the things that's actually affecting my strength. That's one of the reasons, I, or one thing I, only thing I can think of. Because when my bladder spasms, I know that it, you know, it causes mild, maybe, dyspnea, which is increasing my blood pressure. And with more blood pressure, like if it's not, you know, crazy over the top, distro blood pressure, just a slight elevation, like just so it's more normal, I think you're stronger, I'm stronger, you know, because you have more blood flowing to your muscles, like the, like it's, I don't, <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not, but I do know that um, I am weaker, you know, my blood pressure is lower, and people... One of the things that people talked about when I first started playing rugby, I don't think it happens as much anymore, but when it first started years and years ago, 15, 20 years ago, the first Paralympics and all that, people would do extreme things to actually get dysreflexia to boost blood pressure, like four games. Like extreme, like breaking their toe or something like that, like a pinky toe, like like literally, like fairly, like something you can't feel, but it like affects your body, affects your blood pressure, and it gives you that extra boost, you know? you makes you stronger so that's one thing i was thinking is maybe because of having the botox i'm getting way less bladder spasms and way less i'm more my body's more relaxed um it is it, i can feel it uh so that might be part of it too is just the fact that i've actually i'm more relaxed and my blood pressure is lower it, I, it's harder for me to get like strength i need in my arms which is maybe just a, one of the other like catch 22s to the to, to Botox, you know, there's definitely pros and cons to everything. Um, sorry, I'm still trying to go back. You guys had been typing a lot this time, actually. So, um, same with the bowels. The yeah, yeah, oh, bowels for sure. Like right after you have your bowel movement, it your blood pressure. Well, not your everybody's, but my blood pressure weight drops out. You know, it's way lower. Um, and I, I've talked to several people that have had like you get lightheaded a little bit, which uh, I definitely have happened. I'm sure some of you guys do as well. Um, who's my visitor? Oh, that's uh, that's Louie. <laughs> Actually, I think they're both there. Lucy and Louie. And when I'm in a hurry, I can just yell out Lucy Lou, and they both come. Did <laughs> uh, um, uh, your pan? Did your side effects are minimal. Um, one of them is dry mouth, and but besides that. Uh, I don't think it has too many bad side effects. It does lower your blood pressure also, uh, I, I believe. Um, but that's, you know, not... I think a lot of stuff is going to do that. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't really have any other really bad side effects from taking the Ditropan. Um, I, I, Ditropan is one thing that really seems to help. If I don't take it, maybe now with the Botox it would be different, but I know before when I didn't take it, like... Is, I'm very uncomfortable. Like, it, the spasms, it's just, my whole body feels the discomfort. Um, nice, blue. Uh, yeah, I love water too, man. Like, yeah, water is just... Um, yeah, I am still playing rugby, Mike. Uh, 
we just started our season. We've had like the last two weeks have been our first official practices. Um, and then we got a few tournaments coming up the end of November, early December. We're doing um, San Diego, Vegas, and Houston, all within like a four week period. We're doing three tournaments. So it'll be a busy little month before the holidays really start or right around Thanksgiving. But, um, yeah, I know, last year, yeah. It's been a while since I've made the Reno tournament. Um, yeah, even even just like the low point tournament. I don't know why, it just seems to, confl seems to always have something conflicting with time-wise stuff. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. But the Reno tournament is so fun. I love going up there. It's a cool little weekend. So it's great. Lou, how long have I had my catheter? Um, I got my super pubic um, about a year, year and a year, maybe a year and a half after my injury. Initially, I tried just using condom caths. And I also did try to do intermittent cathing myself. Um, with with I did have a little tool and I was kind of able to do it. It just really inconsistent. It was hard to do in my chair. Um, it, it was just hard for me. So I just, it, it, at the time, um, had a few people that had the super pubic that I knew. My mentor, Bobby, that helped me a lot. And then it just seemed like a good idea to try and go with. So, but yeah, so it's been 13 and a half, almost 14 years because I'm getting close to my 15 year mark here on my injury. Um, getting some more things here from the UK. I applied to study medicine. Oops. Mm. Oh, that's cool, Yasmin. Um, yeah, if you want to email me or anything, if you have any questions about stuff, feel free or ask now. Oh, it's fascinating how people recover from spinal cord injuries. Yeah, it's a tough thing to, to recover from a spinal cord injury. Um, and everybody, you know, has... It's hard. <laughs> um, so everybody in here that's done it is is doing it is pretty badass. <laughs> so, um, thanks. Yeah, that's cool. I'm glad you're able to learn from the videos and stuff. Oh, you've had yours for 16 years, Mike. Damn, Mikey. Yeah, that's a uh, yeah, that's a pretty good amount of time. That's how long you've had your super pubic for. Um, and then hold, let me see here. Sorry. Did the condom cast work? Uh, no, the condom casts were a pain in the ass for me. They never really worked well. Uh, I I couldn't keep them on. They would just constantly come off. And I tried so many different brands, different tapes with different adhesives and all that stuff. But in the beginning, especially, I would get a lot of, uh, you know, just random erections. <laughs> I don't know how a better way to say it. But so I was constantly in between, you know, stages, like, it, it was constantly changing sizes. So it, the, those catheters just were coming off, coming off, coming off, like every single time, every day, no matter what I did, it would come off and I would pee myself after a certain amount of time in the day. So that's why, yeah, the condom cast just didn't work for me. Damn, like, yeah, 25 years. So what did you use, I'm curious, for the uh, first um, nine years or so of your injury? Um, hi, Janet. Um, Presley, any new girls lately? No, I actually haven't. <laughs> uh, I, I'm sort of in a f tight financial situation right now, so I don't have the money to take out girls at the moment. <laughs> uh, so that's just, yeah, my, my main reason for not trying to date at all right now. <laughs> uh, oh, you're using a condom cath? Yeah, dude, those, they suck, right? Those things are... <laughs> I don't know. I didn't like the counter cast. I just couldn't keep on. I constantly smelled like urine because I was always peeing on myself. Always peeing on myself. Like, and I mean, I still, with the super pubic, I used to leak a little bit. And uh, we all are, bro. <laughs> I know, dude. I, I feel you. I'm sure. Yeah, it, it's money's tight for everybody. That's never easy. And dating is expensive because I was, you know, I, I was trying for a while some dating apps and stuff. And uh, I don't know. It gets expensive. <laughs> um, but yeah, Mikey, man, that's that's cool. You, that's crazy. You used that for nine years, though. The um, yeah, you're able to, and then 
What made you end up wanting to switch? Was it just because they weren't working and they kind of sucked? Oh, here we go. New question, Jeff. I've been injured since last December. C6. Complete do with injections. Oh, you get injections in your spasms in your hands and legs? Yeah, I've actually talked to a few people that get them for spasms, like in their legs and stuff. I'm curious, yeah, if how that works and has it really, has it helped you? Since you're only a, not even a year post injury, so it's still pretty fresh. But, um,. Yeah, Mikey, condom, yeah, exactly. They just keep coming off. Condom casts never stay on, dude. It's a, it's, that's a hard option to figure out. But, <laughs> um, but uh, Jeff, yeah, that's um, that, that's that's crazy that they started you on that kind of stuff so so soon after your injury. Um, yeah, that's that's like a really. Can you guys read all the chat too? Because uh, Blue Dog just asked if Jeff was on Instagram. He's a C6 too. So, Jeff, if you want to link up with him on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, even with the glue, even with the tape, all that stuff. Not, none of the stuff worked really well for, for condom casts. They're just, it's a hard option, I think. I think you, if you have the function intermittent cath, do that. And, uh, or, um, oh my God, I can't think of the name of it offhand, but the surgery. Where they actually re, uh, they move your urethra so you can do intermittent cathing through your side, like right under your belly. Um, I forget what that surgery is called, but or what that procedure was called. But I know that's another option that they they do use. Um, uh, let me see. Thanks for offering answer questions. All right. Have a nice night, Yasmin. Uh, let's see. Hey, what, what team do you play for, Mikey? Are you because you said you play your in rugby? I'm sure. I just don't recognize your handle, but I know I'm probably sure I've seen you. If I, I get them for spasms as well. T8 complete. Been in the chair going on two years in November. Okay, so you get them for spasms. So does that mean they inject them directly into your legs, like into the muscle that gets the spasms? Is that what's happening? Team Rise. Where's that from? Where are you guys? Uh, oh, from Dallas. Okay. Right on. That's cool. Do you guys play with like, uh, or no, James is in like Houston, huh? James DeBuse uh, and Curly and those guys. Those guys are Houston, not Dallas. But, so that's cool. Like, I guess, yeah, you know, they use Botox for all kinds of stuff. Um, you know, I, I, it's a pretty normal thing for a lot of stuff now, the spasms. My grandma actually got Botox injections in her throat on her vocal cords because she has like super damaged like throat cords. I don't know. It didn't really help her much though. But yeah, you know all the Houston guys? Oh, right on. Yeah, lo those guys are awesome, man. Like James and Curly and stuff. Those are, I love those guys. <laughs> um, but Saul, yeah, so Saul gets in Botox injected directly into his muscles for muscle spasms. Um, and I have heard several people do that and I've heard it has good results. So that's really cool. Um, you know, and it might even be an option to look into for myself because I don't take anything for my spasm. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't have fun or any of that kind of stuff anymore. I just stretch and I do the CBDs a little bit in the day and then I smoke at night or evening night time to like relax my body a little more. Oh, you have a baclofen pump? That's, yeah, that's definitely using some. I used to use baclofen. I was on baclofen for a few years before when I first was out of the hospital, but uh, I did a study at UCLA where they used, they had me, they'd stand me, and then they also like harnessed me up and like stepped my legs on a treadmill, which is really cool. It was actually great therapy um, and felt awesome to like kind of feel like you're walking again. Uh, but they made me come off of baclofen for the study because you couldn't be on any any spasm medications, and I just never, never wanted to get back on it. <laughs> um, superb, you don't cath? No, so I don't. No, no, I don't cath. Yeah, superpubic is just always in and emptying. Um, yeah, I have the cath in my bladder all the time. So superpubic, it's like surgically placed kind of in your belly 
a little below your belly button, like a little bit below my waistline would be for my, my short my shorts. Um, and yeah, it's like a surgically placed whole catheter thing that goes directly to the bladder and uh, they just change out the tube. So it's like having a Foley, but it's not in your penis, you know, it's to, out of the way. <laughs> uh, it really does help. Um, you also get fen fennel uh, while for spasms and smoke, that's cool. Muscle spasms can be a pain in the ass, man. I get pretty bad spasms. I constantly have tone. Um, Mikey, they put a hole in your belly that, that goes to your bladder. Yeah, that's exactly what they do. Yeah, they put the hole, they put a hole in your belly that goes straight through to your bladder. It's like a direct shot. So it's only, you know, you, they don't have to feed the fully through everything. It's just like you're directly through and in. Um... Uh, I'm sorry, let me see the bottom one. Uh, the quad father. <laughs> Power chair 13 years, but never wants to hang around other crips. <laughs> you know what? I have some friends like that too. Uh, that, yeah, like, uh, I've met people, you know, weird about going out with people, other people in chairs and stuff. I have some friends that play rugby that have a three chair rule. They never want to go out with more than, if there's more than three people in wheelchairs, they don't want to do it. But the, so they'll go out with like two other buddies in chairs. But if more than that starts to come, they're out. <laughs> but it's kind of fun hanging in, a, you know, uh, with people in chairs. It's a different community. Um, you know, you can talk about stuff that you might not be able to talk about with your able-bodied friends and things you, and stuff like that. So it, it's, it can be really helpful to be part of the community, especially um, the uh, like s disabled sports community, like rugby and stuff, you know, like those guys. It's like, it takes you back to having more of that, like, like nobody's trying to baby you on the rugby team or be overly nice to you. Like people will tell you what's up. Like, <laughs> like when I first showed up to stuff, my buddy Mike, I was like, yo, why are you wearing a stupid seatbelt? Why are you all those straps on your chair? <laughs> like, you're just kind of like, I don't know, you know? Like, I, because they told me I needed it. And, like, I still had the armrest on my chair and all this stuff. Like, just like, he's like yeah, I don't know. The rugby guys, the people just kind of tell you, like, dude, that looks dumb. Get rid of it. <laughs> it's like little stuff like that. I don't know. It's just nice to have those uh, kind of people around. <laughs> yeah, the three chair rule, man. That's, that's the... <laughs> That's the way it is, then. Uh, so I saw your Bates, uh from Baytown, Texas. That's cool. Bunch of t Texas people. Um, oops, sorry. There we go. Have you heard of what's that say? Injection for injection to prevent UTI. Uh, no, I haven't really, haven't really heard that. Like, I still have wheelie bars too, but that's because I have um, the emotion wheels. And with the emotion wheels, sometimes I'll accidentally launch and I'll just boom, like I'll be, I would have like flipped myself accidentally like so many times, but the wheelie bars are, that's the one thing I'm not gonna take off. I don't care, like, I don't care if you don't think they look cool. I'm not smashing the back of my head on the concrete. I've done it one time, because I forgot they, they were off and I was rolling around and tipped it and flipped. It wasn't fun. I didn't like it. I don't want to do it again. <laughs> uh, push too hard and start to flip off and up. Yeah, that's that's why that's why I'm not taking them off. It's just too, uh, especially with the emotion wheels, because the emotion wheels you can accidentally push a little too hard sometimes, and if you're leaning back, bam, you're just like rolling wheelie like. <laughs> uh, uh, I kind of like wheels, friends, because I can relate to them more. Yeah, it's nice to have friends in chairs. Uh, and a smart drive, that's awesome too. Yeah, smart drives are, smart drive's cool. And I think with a smart drive, you're way less likely to flip yourself over. That kind of acts as a wheelie bar um, somewhat. Maybe not. I think it kind of stabilizes it though, for sure. Um, let's see here. I see a lot of flag from... Yeah, <laughs> you don't want to bust your head open. That's like the one, that, that's definitely one thing that, 
you don't want to do something that's dangerous for yourself. Don't, not for the sake of, but for me, like, it was like, I didn't need to have a seatbelt. I didn't need to have armrests here. I didn't have straps on my legs. I kicked through them most of the time anyways. Like, it was all just stuff that was, like, more hassle. Like, every time I'm trying to get out of the chair, I got to unbuckle, unmove the arm. It was just, I like to be able to just roll up, boom, transfer, get out. <laughs> You've had emotional wheels for 14 years. That's awesome. That's, uh, I think I've had mine for 11 or 12 now. Cause these are my, these are the second ones I've had. I had the original versions for quite a while and I love them, you know? Um, you, the strap. Yeah, the strap. Um, I see. Yeah, I've seen people flip over all the time, but usually, like, most of my friends that don't have wheelie bars are pretty high-functioning, and, and then, like, my friend Andrew, the guy who runs the Triumph Foundation, um, awesome dude and everything, but yeah, he doesn't do, he has emotions and no, um, wheelie bars, but he sets, his, his center of balance is really far, like, it's tough for him to tip it back, like, because the, the way, the way they set the chair up made it really hard for it to flip. But, yeah, because I would be afraid if I was him and being a quad with emotions. But, um, oh, why do I lean back like that? That's my, that's what I was saying earlier. It's a blood pressure thing. Um, I don't know. It helps when I lean back. It kind of, like, helps me keep blood in my brain. It helps me from getting lightheaded. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it's just, that's one of the reasons why I do that. Uh, and that's another quad thing especially higher function, higher level quads. Um, I know we all have blood pressure issues, always usually have low blood pressure and trying to keep, keep yourself conscious is, <laughs> is a good thing. Um, but, uh, look into the tail, they have power assist wheels. Tailwind chair? Yeah, I haven't even really heard of that. But that's cool, yeah, I mean, I'll, I, I am actually gonna be needing a new chair soon. I'm gonna start looking into that. So hopefully sometime soon I will be trying to get a chair, but I don't know if I'll get new emotions or, yeah, I don't know. But everything, I'm starting to wear my chair and even these wheels are starting to get a little worn now. But, but all right guys, this is actually longer than I had definitely intended to go. <laughs> I was kind of tired at first, but just start talking and you guys were, pretty engaging through the whole time so a lot of you know kit just makes everything go a lot faster for me <laughs> um yeah but unless you guys have any other quick questions or anything i'll be back so i'm gonna like i said before do the first and third uh tuesday of every month so i'll do again the um the first tuesday of uh next month so i think it'd be like two weeks off and then i'll be back with another live one and that'll be right, yeah, like, uh, right after Halloween. So, um, Mason, you tip over and your legs fall on your face in public. That's always fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, tipping over anywhere is not fun. Public, at your house, it doesn't matter where you are. You don't, you don't want to flip over on your head. <laughs> it's, it's never a good thing. Uh... Quad Father, thanks, man. I appreciate that. That's a uh, very nice. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad if I can inspire you in any way at all, bro. That's that's cool. It makes my day. So <laughs> hope to see you on the. Uh, yeah, on for sure. <laughs> yeah, that'll be cool. Are you gonna be um, going to the Houston tournament in the beginning of December? Like the it's like the second weekend or first or second weekend of December. Cause I know we're, I think, uh, actually I know we're, our, our team's going to that one. So if you are, we'll see you out there for sure. Uh, that will be cool. Hey, from New Zealand. That's awesome. Janet, how you doing? Um, what made me get Botox injections? Oh my gosh, sorry. <laughs> what made me get Botox injections? Uh, was just my urologist. I, well, I had talked to a couple people. I thought about it before, but I switched urologist about a year ago and she kind of has been more pro Botox and sort of was pushing it to try it and stuff. So 
So I went with it, tried it, and I think I like it, so uh, I don't know. The only thing that sucks is this whole fatigue, weakness thing, not being able to transfer myself or struggling like hell to transfer myself. Um, oh, you guys are, Mikey. Cool. So I'll see you for sure. I'll see you in Houston. That'll be awesome, man. It'll be cool. We'll talk. Uh, and anybody else in the Texas area, you guys should come out, even if you're not playing, come out and check out the tournament. It'll be really cool. Um... Yeah, rugby is, is awesome. Um, where is metal and muscle? Which I don't think I don't think our team is going. Or is that the Houston tournament? Um, yeah, I'm not even. Uh, oh, it is the Houston one. Okay, then yeah, yeah, then we are. Then not yeah, I'm going. So the beginning, the one that's at the beginning of December. I just didn't know what it was called. I just know that we we're going to Houston for that tournament. <laughs> And then the weekend before, we're in, we're doing Vegas, and hosting our own little tournament with the Vegas team co-hosting it. Um, so if you guys want to come out to Vegas, anybody wants to check out some rugby, we'll be in Vegas. Uh, I think the thirtieth of November and the first and second, three day. Um, Saul, so you should look into the Botox for the spasms. Maybe I will check it out for my legs because I do have pretty spastic legs, but. I sort of have it under control for the most part. I try to. But... <laughs> Alright guys, I think I'm going to wrap it up now. I'm starting to get a little tired. I think I'm waking my dog up. He's getting grumpy back there. So, <laughs> But cool guys, I'll see everybody in a few weeks. You guys come back, check it out. Um, and uh, yeah, any questions, anything you guys got, check me out. You can yeah email me, leave them in comments, message me on Instagram, whatever. Yeah, whatever works. So... Take it easy, guys. Live to roll. Let's get a fist bump. <laughs> Later, everybody.